Hello, this is Fly on the Wall. Actually, it's Lombardi Live, but we're going to be a fly on the wall. We're just going to kind of kick back and listen to three of the greatest drummers in the world hang out with each other. How cool is that? J.R. Robinson, Greg Bissonette, Jimmy Branley, along with David Garfield, a great producer and keyboard player, are going to talk back and forth about not only their careers when they're in the studio working with the producer, but also questions they have about each other. I often say interviews we have on Drum Channel are some of the best ways you can learn. Not just seeing how drummers do what they're doing, but hear them talk about why they do it. This is part of a show on Drum Channel that I think is really special. Check it out. I think you're going to enjoy it. Speaking of JR playing what? on Beyond the Sea and you talk about George saying bring a rock drummer in to play jazz, he played on the original Louis Prima remake with David Lee Roth on Just a Gigolo. You're yeah. on Just That's a Gigolo. John. I just jig Gigolo and California Girls. And, you bet. And, and Music Street. And almost was going to go out with I them. know. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that you did. Uh, that, that leads me, can I ask a couple of questions of Greg? Of course, he's the next victim. Oh. <laughs> so, I want two questions. Okay. One is, I mean, I saw you with Maynard, and uh, we were all just friggin' blown you away. You were at a Maynard show. Yeah, I was at a NAMM show. Oh my gosh. And I can't remember where the hell we yeah, were, but yeah. we were, I think I was with Lenny or... Yeah, Lenny I came out in our mind, they came to every gig. And, um, but that's not my question. You've been with Ringo for how many years now? Well, I started in, in 03 in the Ringo and the Roundheads, so 15 years, and then uh, 10 years since 08 in the All-Star Band. So. Okay, so you've played every single song and groove that Ringo's ever invented, right? You've played them, most of them. I'm just a fan. I've tried no, to No, but here's my question. Is there one of the songs that stands out that may not be as popular as everybody, but it has one of the hippest drum beats? Yeah. Could you could you demonstrate maybe uh, yeah, what you that bet. is? Yeah, you bet. The first time I played with him, you know, he said, you know, I know you and your brother, Matt, you have a Beatle band that you brought Will Lee to see at Cafe Cordial. And he goes, oh, I'm going to do this in L.A., right. in New York. And he lapped us. But we had this Beatle band. And, we used to, and I remember as a kid, John, listening with the headphones to Beatle records. And I remember on the, I think it's the Beatles' second album, Long Tall Sally, that Paul yes. sings so great. I want to tell him man, about Uncle John. And then I hear in my headphones, I hear a, a crash cymbal. And another crash cymbal, and I hear a tom tom, and a small tom, and a snare drum, and a bass drum, all playing triplets, rolling triplets. And there was no overdubbing, it was him playing. Right. And I said, So, can I ask you, Ringo? Because he said, Aren't you going to ask me any questions? I said, Yeah, how did you come up with that? And he says, Well, you know, I'm left handed. I said, uh, Every drummer knows you're left handed. I know you ate for breakfast on 1965, <laughs> June 3rd. You know? He said, Well, first I hit the crash with my left hand the bass drum, and then I hit the floor, and then I hit the, cr the snare, and then I reversed it, crash with the right hand, and a snare, and a floor. And I said, so those were triplets? And he says, I don't know if they were triplets, but we're playing. How oh, about He said, if I wanted the girls to scream, I'd put my head down. My first lesson, you know? Oh, my God. That was so cool. That was fantastic. That was fantastic. And, and he's always got great stories. He says, you know, when Zach was little, his son Zach plays drums in The Who. Right. And he said, when Zach was little, you know, I showed him the beat. And I kind of wanted to say, which beat? You know, well, the beat. I'm thinking, was it, you know, because he loves Cozy Cole. Was it? But oh, no, no, was it the bossa? Oh, no, the, the beat. So he goes... For a couple of weeks, he got it. He really got the feel. So I showed him the other beat, and I thought, so Ringo, what other beat? And he said, well, the other beat. Uh, I love it. I love it. Oh, That's man. fantastic. The other beat. <laughs> that is so great. Uh -huh. I mean, and, uh, you know, it's, it's so great that, you know, you've been able to, you know, work with this legend that, that changed all of our lives. You know? Yes. I mean, changed our lives. And I was kind of pissed off when my sister started watching them. And I go, guitar? I can play guitar. So I started playing guitar the next day. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, uh, you know it, was, it was all just, really? They 
were the greatest thing ever. I agree. And it's like, how can, how can music get better? Right. And it did. Yeah. And it, it, it changed. They're still <laughs> good, though. They're still good. That's what's amazing to me is that music's grown and explored and, and expanded and gotten better, but the Beatles stuff still holds up. Oh, that's great. right. So much. That's yeah. right. He's and Ringo, my, Ringo's a great guy, too. He's that's my, on top yeah. of it all. He's the sweetest guy. I, he, he called me on my I, I was recording with my brother today, but he called me, and I didn't know who it was because I had my phone off, so I... I listen and it says he's he's out shopping today because we're going on tour in a couple of weeks and he's he's always busting me because he's he's so in shape he's a vegan he exercises and he's always saying hey come on you know get in shape we're gonna do the treadmill what why you eat the you know we always he's my guru for food so he leaves me this message today it's on my phone I'll play it for you he says uh, he says Greg how you doing I'm out shopping I'm just wondering what size you are this time of year I found a T-shirt that would work great for you. I'm going to get a medium, but you might have to lose 100 pounds. <laughs> oh, and he just loves you because he's just that guy. He's wow, your friend, you know. Yeah. He's looking to buy you a T-shirt because he's your pal. And he's my favorite drummer ever. Oh. And a great friend. That's great. great. Greg, actually, he was saying, I went to Greg's uh, house a couple times. And yeah. I saw these pictures of Beatles all around. <laughs> yeah. and that's, it, now that we're talking, it's in, and he always wore very, very into that. And... The first thing I heard from you was with David Roth. It was was a big thing for you to, to, to go into the rock thing. Was it, did you did you find yourself having to play really loud in those gigs? Well, I was I am now exactly of the mind of Jr. In fact, Ringo sometimes will lean over and he'll say, "Were we hitting a little hard on that okay. one?" And I'll say, "If you think we were," because he, no. he never redlines the drums. He always just <laughs> about the loudest he'll play is you know. You know, he says, John Bonham didn't hit that hard. People no. think he was one of his best friends. Right. He said he didn't hit that hard. You know, and when you look at the way Buddy tuned his drums, That's Buddy right. Rich, it's very similar, you know, wide open 24, boom, but, but he wasn't clobbering them. Yeah. So, but at 26 years old, I didn't want to be branded, oh, the jazz big band guy, because Maynard was my dream. But I wanted to also, you know, the Beatles were my heroes. I want to play rock. It's my favorite kind of music, pop rock. So as much as I love jazz and everything else, so I'm thinking, I David Lee Roth left Van Halen. You did the EP. Yeah. He was still in Van Halen when, yeah. when J.R. did Crazy from the Heat. And then I think you were asked and you didn't do it, but yeah. they started auditioning drummers and I got the gig. And then I'm thinking, oh, man, now's my chance to break out and be a rock guy, so I'm like, my hands are bleeding every night, yeah. Jimmy. Bleeding, I'm on the bus, I'm taping them up, and my fingernails were turning black. I went to a doctor, he said, are you a pitcher? <laughs> I said, no, but I throw my stick out. And I came to Don, I said, Don, I'm breaking these DW trigger pedals. He goes, well, you didn't tell me you were jumping off the riser to bang down, and I was playing so hard, because just it was fun. It was the vibe. It was 1986, and the pace, the forum was packed. Hey, did and you have like the, the huge uh, uh, amplification system behind you? Yeah. Our, my my yeah. monitor was two of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, and it was like you hit the bass drum. It's, have friends come out and do a come to the sound check. Hit the bass drum. Wow, it'd be like knock them over. Yeah. It was just so much fun. And Steve I had like I think ten Marshall stacks. Steve had a lot. Yeah. Billy Sheehan had ten Ampeg stacks, and it was just loud. But the big, the sound guy, like you're saying, he couldn't really make it sound amazing out there because the stage volume was so yeah, loud. So loud. And everything's coming off the vocal mic, so yeah. you gotta play for your sound guy so he can put it through the mains yeah. that are that's right. sound good. So, yeah, but I hit really hard. Yeah, and, and that's a, listen, should. and that's an art form, and that takes years to learn that. Yeah. yeah. You, you just can't learn that. You know, you just can't do it. So. Especially at 26. <laughs> well, it's been such a thrill to be with my three. Favorite drummers here, Greg Bissonette, John J.R. Robinson, Jimmy Branley, and um, at the Drum Channel here in Oxnard, California. And uh, we've had a great time talking and um, explaining things, asking questions. And now we're just going to do a little bit of um, jamming and experimenting with a few different grooves for you all to see how these great drummers work in an unrehearsed and uncharted and even uncomposed situation. So okay. um, let's do a shuffle. Um, I'm going to have, who wants to start it? One of you two guys. 
You want, you want to start it? Sure. Start so, so we're going to do a shuffle, which is one of our great um, grooves, and especially for drums. You start it out, and we'll just go where we go. Okay. Want to do a Texas shuffle, funk shuffle, rock shuffle? You call the it. Detroit shuffle. Detroit. The Detroit this this shuffle. shuffle. Oh, my Lord. It's kind of like Texas, but north. <laughs> okay, north. <laughs> it's the this and that. Start shuffle. The Ooh, shuffle. shuffle. That was nowhere I thought we were going to do it. I thought we were going to do a completely different shuffle. See, that's all you musicians, be ready. Be ready for anything. Now, how about a funk groove? Uh, this one, you'll be elected to start off. Golly, where to go? Ain't nobody. <laughs> oh, no, I won't do that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah,
better. Oh my Ooh. God, that was fun. <laughs> All right, you guys, well, since we got Jimmy here, we got to do something in our limited capacity for oh. Latin, Afro-Cuban, Songo, Timba. There's so many names. I don't really know what everything is, but we're going to explore something. Um, uh, you set us up and we'll, we'll find our way there. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what a thrill. How about these great three drummers, huh? I hope we get to do this again, and we will be doing some more segments with other of the drummers on the project. So what a thrill to be here at the Drum Channel. We want to thank Don Lombardi and everybody here for having us. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Yeah, Don. Thank you, Don. Everybody. And we're going we're gonna to try something in the, what we call uh, Latin, uh, Afro-Cuban, we don't know the difference between them all. Timba, songo, I have all the words. But, but he does. Latin yeah. jazz. <laughs> but Jimmy, we, if you guide us into a groove, and hopefully we'll be able to figure out where to come in, OK? All right. <laughs>
beautiful. The guys. David Garfield Band. Yeah. Always our leader. Yeah, baby. From Oxnard to Studio <laughs> City, <laughs> up and down Ventura Boulevard. Yes. Bottom 50. Yeah, baby. Yeah, man. Yeah, David. But thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Thank I just think this is so cool when you hear guys of that caliber asking each other questions. When they come out here to Drum Channel, they always are doing that. To capture it on camera, I just think is not only educational, but you know, just gives you an insight as to how our favorite drummers in the world are as excited to learn from each other as we are to learn from them. On DC Live, you're going to see more of this interview. In interviews and roundtables, they actually sit down and talk amongst each other. There's a whole bunch of series we have in originals here on Drum Channel. There's the Chad Smith Show, Terry Bozio's Art of Drumming, we have Jams, Historical Legends, and as I said, DC Live and Roundtables and Interviews. Join us here on Drum Channel. If you're not a member, please sign up. And if you are a member, check out everything we have on Drum Channel. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Drum Channel, and I'll see you next week, Tuesday, 5 p.m., Lombardi Live or fly on the wall, who knows what we're gonna do next. <laughs>